all of you to mute and then uh, you won't be able to unmute yourself uh, during this uh, period. Okay. Okay. Okay, so uh yeah, I will check with you all shortly, yeah. Okay. All right. Hello, everybody. Good evening. Come. You will be able to chat with me using the chat box function. Huh? So go ahead and uh, say hi in the chat. Hello. <laughs> hi, Michelle. Hello, Rosanna. Yeah, yeah, hello. Okie dokes. Nathan, Lina, hello, Lina. Your fruit salad very popular, no? They are asking for more. Okay, let me know whether my voice, am I shouting or, or, or is the volume okay? If it's okay, just let me know it's okay. Hello, Lily. Okay, uh, great. Uh, Lee King, you got any concern, you can type inside the chat. Don't need to use the raise hand, just uh, go ahead and type in the chat, yeah. Oh, you think I'm shouting? Okay, okay, I will stay further. You see how far I am from the device? <laughs> All right, let's see. Peggy, hi Peggy. Leslie and Song Yong. Will you be sharing the recording of this lecture? Okay, let me share something interesting with all of you today. Huh? So for the first time, for the first time, for, even for myself, uh, we have a very helpful, we have a very helpful uh, colleague by the name of Chong Ming. If you guys are following our social media page on Saturday, he is the guy that makes our own show possible. So today he's going to live stream this, uh, this seminar and he's going to put it on YouTube as well as Facebook. All right, so it'll be recorded there in the future. If you guys are interested, you can watch it from, from uh, Facebook and YouTube directly. Is that okay? Chongming is the man, you are absolutely right. Okay, time now, 7.45. Let's go, let's go. Are you guys ready? Ready, all right, beautiful. Okay, let's start. Huh? Okay, so today's, uh, today's topic is going to be something that is really, really uh, interesting and something that I, I find very, uh, very important for everybody to, to at least know something about that. Okay, if I were to share with you a little bit, right, when I first started, when I first started my uh, journey of uh, trying to talk with people, when I was 15 years old and in sec 3, I was somebody that couldn't speak. I can't talk at all, right? And, and in that sense, uh, I was being ostracized a lot because, uh, you know, the teacher also don't call you, your friend also don't call you, then I just sit at the back of the classroom. Right? Until, until very much later in uh, poly, then I realized this kind of uh, attitude is going to, or this kind, of, this kind of situation is going to put me in a very disadvantageous kind of position when it, when, when it comes to presentation and whatnot. And in the polytechnic, you know, most of our results are hinged on presentation. So if the teacher don't know you, the teacher don't like you, then uh, it's very hard for us to, to be able to score that participation mark, right? Because sometimes you are so close to getting the distinction, it's just that few percent which the participation mark can help you to, to uh, what we call that, to augment this, uh, this shortfall, right? So then uh, when I was in Nian, I went to the library and basically I scoured through every single book uh, that has got to do with uh, interpersonal relationship. So I was very lame. Every day I end school about 2.30. Then my CCA start at 
So between 2.30 to 5.30, I'll go to the library and then I'll be at the lifestyle section, reading up all the books and watching a video at the DVD room. So uh, Nian really uh, saved me. Uh. So then from there, I started to understand and then uh, you know make this into something that I'm passionate about. Uh. So today, I want to share with you uh, how to make everybody like you. Okay, how to make everybody like you. Very, very, uh, what I call that, <laughs> it is a topic that I find very hard to talk about, but let's go, let's try it out. Exactly, thank you very much. Huh? Let's go. So today, we are going to be talking about three things, okay? First one, when I talk about uh, how to make anybody like you, uh, the first word that people always ask me is, does it mean that you need to be very popular, right? So this is something that we're going to be discussing. Uh. Does it mean that likable and popular are the same thing? Huh? So this one is something I want to share later. Then the next thing is how to become likable. And I have to put that bracket because a lot of people are wondering. I'm not an extrovert, no, Jackie. I, I, <laughs> I prefer to, to just uh, sit by myself. I, I don't really want to mingle with people. I'm more introverted that way. Can I make myself likable as well? The answer is yes. Okay, likability has nothing to do with whether you like to talk with people or not. Okay, so then uh, the last bit is what I want to talk. That's the bulk of today's uh, topic. Uh, it's how to put other people before yourself. And when I say this sentence, uh, putting others before self, a lot of people start to panic and they say, oh, does it mean that I need to go and do like a lot of volunteering work? Does it mean that I need to uh, take very massive actions in order for these kind of things to happen? Um, I would say yes and no. If you are ready and your, your situation allows you to go and do the mega massive things for others, go ahead. But if let's say today you just want to learn how to influence your immediate community, and putting them before yourself, then yes, I will be able to, to share with you some simple steps, how you are able to, to get there. Alright? Now, so today, if this is the first time uh, you are hearing me, especially those people who are on YouTube as well as Facebook, hello, good evening again. Alright, uh, my name is Jackie, and one, I want to share with you uh, the reason why I want to talk about this is because um, this is something, this is a topic, or rather the topics that I speak about, I feel are stuff that people can use in their day-to-day -day life, alright? And what makes me think that I've ever talked about all this, okay? So when I was in Nian, studied business, okay? And then uh, when I went to uh, army and I was thinking, you know what, I want to study and do my NS at the same time. So I looked for a suitable course. So when I was studying business, I was like, I, you know what, maybe business is something that uh, doesn't need to be studied. It's something that you need to go and try. So I want to study something else. So end up, I got myself into a psychology, uh, psych, 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 psychology course in James Cook University, uh, Singapore, the old campus at Upper Thomson Road. Right? Then um, one thing led to another, which led me to go and pursue a master's in counseling at Monash University. And I also did a distant learning because I was working at the same time as well. So uh, this was done at uh, with collaboration at Kaplan, you know, Kaplan and uh, Wilkie, right? So uh, then uh, career-wise, right now, I'm working in uh, Sport Singapore, and as all of you know, Active SG, right? So this is the, we are the biggest operator of all the swimming pools, as well as uh, sports hall gyms uh, in Singapore. And within this, this uh, big family of Active SG, there is a small team here, we call ourselves Team Nila. And what Team Nila is, is essentially a sport volunteering force, right? So these topics that I share with you, you can definitely use it in volunteering when we engage with the public, sharing with them, uh, you know, the, the kind of uh, messages, the health or wellness messages that we share, share to the public during our outreach events. At the same time, I also hope that the topics can bring value to you at a personal level. Right, we would like you to, 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 through volunteering, you practice these interpersonal skills and then the interpersonal skills help you in your work, right? In your career, in your relationship with the family and a relationship with your friends, okay? So yeah, if you've got questions, just type it in the chat. I'll be able to help you out. Lah. So, wow, okay, thank you very much. <laughs> All right, so popular versus likable. Interesting topic to talk about today. Huh? Let me give you, let me give you, a, give you a, a statement here. All right, you can be popular, but yet people can still dislike you. So if you're scratching your head right now, I would like you to think about the times when you were back in school. Think about the most popular person. 
do you like that popular person? All right? When I was in school, the most popular person is the person that bullied me. Yeah, it was, it was this guy from the basketball team. Uh, he, he refused to let me get on the bus and then he pulled my back so hard, my back uh, ripped apart, right? So, so he was a damn popular person. I wasn't, right? And, and I really absolutely disliked him. Yeah, so you can be the most popular person. People can still uh, dislike you, right? So, so popularity and likability, they are not the same thing. Totally not. Okay, let me uh, further elaborate this uh, for everybody. Yeah? So there is a study done, okay, and then uh, we come up with this uh, matrix where we measure your likability versus your competence. Okay, and in this, uh, in this study, they ask this question, all right, if you are supposed to go and find somebody to work with uh, in your team, some, you're supposed to look for a teammate to work on the same project, right, who are you going to help? Uh, who are you going to pick? All right. So the first guy that everybody will pick is the lovable star. Because not only are you so likable, you are also somebody who can do the work perfectly well. So you are the person that the most people will want to pick inside your team. Then now come the second choice. Do you think you want to pick somebody who is very good at the work, but very, very unlikable? Somebody that you dislike so much, but very smart, very intelligent, very good. Or would you like somebody who cannot do the work but is an absolutely nice person and you really love to talk with him or her, right? So if you look at the, the studies, right, number one, they will pick lovable star. And number two, between the competent jerk and the likable fool, they pick the likable fool, all right? Followed by the competent jerk. And then the last Definitely last that nobody wants is the incompetent jerk. Not only you don't know how to do the work, you're also a very uh, you're also not a very unpopular, unlike person. So nobody really wants to work with you at all. Okay, so now it begets this question when you see this uh, matrix, right? When you see this matrix, don't you don't you start to wonder, assuming today I'm not the best, I'm not the best in the field, okay? I'm not knowledgeable at all. Alright? It seems like I will still have somebody who will pick me if I am likable. Right? Don't you think that's quite interesting? It's not about how smart I am. It's about how likable I am. So if you contextualize this into our day-to-day -day life, how do we influence others or how do we present ourselves? People will see us as... They will first measure... They will first rate us on our likability before they decide to, to see whether we can do the work or not. Right? Don't you think it's something that's interesting? Right? That said, I feel very strongly that in today's world, where relationship is the most important uh, factor to help you to succeed in your workplace, you need to learn how to be likable. Alright? You need to learn to, how to be likable and you will definitely be able to see how it will help you to succeed. Uh, later in, in your in your life okay now let's move on huh? how to make yourself likable this is something that's very interesting okay let's let's have a look huh? in terms of first impressions okay how many how just think to yourself how long does it take for the first impression to form all right, before the first word is spoken or after the first word is spoken. All right, if you look at all the, the research article around first impression, all of us know the same thing. The first impression is formed within the first couple of seconds. Yes, Andy, you're right. Five seconds to form the first impression. That means uh, you don't even have to say the first word. Uh, people already have a, have, a, have a picture of what kind of human being you are. But then I take this further a little bit. What they see is what they think they will get. All right? Which means that uh, once the impression is formed, no matter what you do, it's going to be a very difficult thing to try to change other people's mind of what kind of person you are. So then, um, so I'm a huge uh, victim of this, this uh, issue. And let me explain to you why. Okay? Because why... When I was uh, in Nian, right, one of the biggest mistakes that I, I made, which uh, currently I'm still, 
uh, trying my best to recover is how to how come I didn't work on my branding at that time? Why is it that um, everyone else in school were doing uh, were studying well? They all joined a nice CCA. Uh, you know, they were all very likable. But yet, you know, for me, I I'm just that kind of student where I go to school, study what I need to study. When the time is up. I just take the bus and I go home. I don't have a, the kind of social life. I don't have that kind of uh, school life that, 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 you know, what polytechnic students uh, used to have. So when I reflect on this kind of uh, situation right now, ah, my senior here, ah, okay, that's great. <laughs> so when I reflect on that situation, I realize it's my personal branding that has a bit of a problem. So let me, uh, let me try to explain to you. Okay. Look at this scene. This is a typical scene that we will observe when we go to a, a, a institute of higher learning. All right. I definitely look like one of them. Yeah. So I, I probably look like the person with the black checker backpack. So I always wear shorts, basketball shorts, and I always wear slippers to school. So 17, 18 years old, the school is expecting to give us a diploma that allow us to go and work in, in, the, in the industry to become, you know, a proud alumni. But then, <laughs> I wear slippers to work and I wear, I wear slippers to school and I wear slippers for major presentation. Now, and this habit, okay, I didn't kick. I didn't kick until, my, my, uh, until the day that I went to work for one of my friends. Okay, so my friend is, is, is doing some kind of uh, business in the education world. And because I thought, well, since I'm working for my friend, I'll just turn up in slippers and shorts every day. Because I thought that was the cool thing to do, right? And, and then he, he, he asked me this question you know, after like two, three months of working for him. And then he, he said like, hey, you know that every other day there are clients uh, walking inside my office and then you look like this, um, what kind of impression are you trying to create of, you know, if, in front of these uh, people? Then, uh, you see, if, if Jackie, you really think that you want to become successful, you really think that you want to, uh, you know, achieve something in your life, before you get there, you need to look like you are there. So then, it, it really uh, struck me, right, that in in the world where people perceive you within three to five seconds, how you dress up, how you look like, is going to determine how they speak with you, right? If today I were to go and meet any of you, uh, you know, Team Mila volunteers, and I dress up in, in uh, my t-shirt and my shorts and my slippers, you probably think that I'm off duty. So you probably won't want to talk to me about work anyway, right? So then uh, my distance with you become uh, even further. But yet, if I come in, dress in my uh, sports attire with my uh, my sports shoe or whatever, you know, you know that I'm here for work, you know, I'm here for duty. The kind of conversation that we will be having is very much uh, different, right? So this is the first thing that I want to say. If you want to make yourself likable, ask yourself, what is the crowd? What is the audience that you are trying to reach out to? And can you dress in a way that people will respect you in that field? Of course, in my work, I mean sports, right? So if today I come and wear a tie, shirt and tie, then of course I look very funny. So therefore, putting myself in sports attire is relevant in this context. However, if you are going to be working in a marketing job, you're going to be working in a banking and finance job, then I think there is a certain look that we need to adhere to. And if you are currently studying in uni or in poly, then perhaps this is something you want to take note of. Start to wear your long pants, start to wear your shoes, you know, start to wear your long sleeve shirt, just practice, you're going to get there. Okay, then the next thing that I would like to, uh, next thing I would like to talk about is this, all right, one of the major, major things that people ask, what makes somebody likable, all right, it is not about how they, how they appear, you know, not like the most beautiful or the most handsome person will be the most likable, that's not the case, all right, they always want to know whether this person is genuine, whether this person is transparent. Okay, so in that sense, yeah, what is your story? Correct. So what is the story that bring you to where you are right now? So 
for the volunteers who have uh, encounter with me before, you all know that I, I am somebody, you know, I, I don't need to hide, right? If I've got something that I want to say, I'll say it out. So then in that, in that manner, during your interaction with me, you can clearly see that Jackie is a person who leaves no stone unturned. I will address the issue as it is without uh, having to go and do the, the whole uh, flip the story here and there kind of uh, behavior. So it reflects my, my, my attitude of being direct, of being, uh, being very uh, precise and wanting to get to the bottom of things. So then what is your story? What kind of story are, are, is people understanding when, you, uh, when they interact with you? Okay, the worst kind of uh, branding is when you are trying to portray yourself as somebody that is very honest, but then uh, behind the scenes, you are doing very dishonest things. And then when people manage to find out these nasty things about you, then people start to wonder, eh, how come this person doesn't feel very sincere, doesn't feel very genuine, and obviously not transparent. And then people, suddenly your likability factor just go all the way down. Alright, so we need to behave in a way where it shows our story and it needs to be true. Okay, cool. Let's see. Uh. So when I was studying to be a teacher, we had to be properly attired all the time. Exactly, exactly. Yes, Nathan, you are right. So I, I feel, so until today, I still ask myself, why didn't I, I follow the, the right crowd uh, to wear uh, shoes, you know, proper, proper attire when, when I was uh, supposed to be studying in an uh, in a, in a institute that will help me to get to, uh, to the workplace, right? So yes. Okay, so how to make yourself likable? Two things are, uh. number one, dress to impress. Number two, give us a story. Give us a branding guideline. Uh, give us a branding that suits your style. Okay, what you want to be, how you want to portray. So now we come to part three. How to put other people first. Why is this important? Making people like you, uh, making people like you, is not about uh, you know, changing yourself. I'm not asking you to go and become an Instagram influencer, a social media influencer, where people will drop you a lot of likes on your social media page. That is not the, that is not the, the, the kind of likability that I'm trying to, to get at. What The kind of likability that I want is people must see you as somebody that they can trust. They must see you as somebody that they can uh, rely on and things where people can, uh, what do you call that? They are able to, to, to share openly things with you, all right? And the way you can do that is to put other people first. And what is the end result of putting other people first, all right? When you do that, okay, you make yourself a trustworthy person and you help the person to feel valued as a human being, okay? Here, the next few things that I will share with you, I break them down into stages. Okay, so here I will spend a little bit more time because this is where the bulk of the information is. Okay, so how to how to put other people how, how to put other people uh, in front of you, right? We have to follow this model. This is the TLC model. Okay, so T stands for take notice. <laughs> take notice. L stands for listen, and C stands for consistency. Yeah, not tender loving care. Although when you finish all the TLC steps, you will be providing tender loving care to your to the audience, to the recipient. Yeah. So you say uh Stephen Lim go for Singapore Idol audition two over already. Yeah. So that is more popularity, right? Not so much likability. Okay, cool. Shall we continue? Okay, so when I say take notice, uh, I mean to take notice of your audience, the person that you are talking to. Let me share with you, uh, this thing is so, so easy to do and it will change the way people speak with you starting from right now. Okay, you all must follow this. Uh. Tomorrow you don't believe you do, you, you will see the effect. Number one, level one. Okay, how to take notice. The easiest way to take notice, you comment on the very obvious things. So you see this uh, beautiful lady in the photo, comment on the most obvious thing. Wow, 
that's a really nice necklace that you are uh, very nice uh, what you call that a very nice earring that you are having right having there or comment about the hair if the hairstyle is new wow that's a new hairstyle you look great in that or if you think the dress is nice yeah great nice dress makes you look really beautiful today right so you are not flattering the person because if if there's really nothing nice about it then don't say yeah because uh, it's not sincere right but right now i would like you to observe the people that you hang around with starting from now or the next time you see a stranger outside when i go to ntuc one thing that i like to do is to talk with the person who helped me to check out why because they work there for eight hour shift and you know life is very mundane for them you just take the item and scan take the item and scan take the item and scan but when you go there and you do the level one of take notice, just like, wow, that's a, you, you, you work very fast. You pack the item very fast. You know, it is a compliment to them. It shows that they are being seen. Somebody is noticing their effort and it makes their day immediately. All right. So comment on the obvious is level one. Let's find out what is level two. Okay. Level two is require you to do a little bit of leg work. Huh? So you need to comment on the less obvious. <laughs> then you'll be like, wow, Jackie, you're very lame and less obvious. Okay, so what does comment on the less obvious mean? So let's say today I have a colleague, all right, same team as me. Maybe uh, her name is Serene, all right, and she recently just came back from a holiday from Taiwan, and I happen to know that. So then I'll be like, hey, Serene, welcome back. How was your holiday to Taiwan, right? And, and to her, there are two things that will happen. The first thing is, wow, this Jackie noticed my absence, this Jackie noticed my presence, and this Jackie is aware what I was doing for the past couple of weeks. So doesn't that make, doesn't that make me look like I'm taking notice of this person on another level, right? So it's not something you can wear on your face, wear on your body, but it's something that I care about you, then I went to find out, and then I come and ask you about it. So this can happen for people yeah, you can say it's a small talk, but it's not really a small talk because uh, right here, I would like you to take notice of the person. So you need to notice the, the, the things that they are doing or the things that are happening around them. So level two is the less obvious, the things that you can see because uh, you know when, you're, when your teammate is not, in, in, not at her table, you, you obviously know that she's not at the table. Then if you care enough, you'll go and find out where this person uh, went to whether is it a holiday or is it a work trip or whatever, when the person is back, just ask them about it. Or if this person suddenly or, you know, over the, 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 the week, the, maybe the, you have a pregnant team member who, you know, just gave birth, then you can also ask, you know, how's, the, how's, how's everything, you know, are you recovering well, things like that. So people know that you are noticing them. Okay, so obviously level three will be comment on the least obvious. All right, and the least obvious require you to go and look beyond what you see. All right, so when you look at this photo down here, what is the what is the what is the thing that stands out the most to you? How is this person? What does this person's uh, body language? You know, by pressing the nose bridge, what does it say? Stress, right? Do you think the person had a good day at work? Tired. Yeah, yeah. So when, when we talk about comment on the least obvious, we need to observe the person's body language to the point we try to form some kind of understanding like why is this person reacting this way? Then we go up and ask, for example, if this person's name is uh, Thomas, right? So, hey, Thomas, how are you feeling? You, you look really uh, stressed. Is it because, you know, just now you had a difficult meeting earlier? Right? So, again, you are noticing them. You are noticing what's happening to them. And you, are, you notice enough to go and ask about it. Yeah. <laughs> Michael, could be mistaken that you are stalking me. No, this is not stalking. La. I mean, obviously, when you care about the person enough, you will want to go and uh, you know approach them to to ask about these kind of topics. So if you do level one to three, comment on the most obvious, the least of the not so obvious as well as the least obvious. What do you think is the outcome? How do you think your coworker will feel towards you? 
do you think they will be annoyed with you or do you think they will be appreciative of you or do you think they will like you? Yeah, Joanna, you are right. They'll, they'll find you to be a very caring person. So does that help to increase your likability or decrease your likability? Right? So yes, correct. It will help to help help you to uh, increase your likability because yes, you know, you are, you are, uh, you know, giving, giving uh, attention to people, you're giving appreciation to people. So these are the kind of uh, behaviors that will associate with, you know, you being a likable person. All right, are you ready for the next one? Ah, okay, L is listen. Huh? So the full sentence is listen with your whole body. Then be like, wow, Jackie, you a bit crazy. Huh? What do you mean by listening with your whole body? Okay, let's start huh, with the most basic level one. So listening level one, okay, listen with your ears. What do I mean by that? When you listen with your ears, you need to hear the words, the words that people are saying. A lot of time when we listen to people talk, we listen with one intention. The one intention that we have is to try to reply. We listen to reply, okay? But now I want you to listen because you want to listen. Ah, right? We listen because we want to listen. So therefore, when the person is talking, you must pay attention to every single word the person is saying. Right? If they tell you they are tired, look at them. I, okay, I hear that you are tired. If they tell you that they are upset, yeah, I hear that you are upset. So make sure that the words that they are saying, you are 100% paying attention to it. Okay? So that is number one. There is no need to rush to a reply. Okay, they don't want to hear your solution. They just want you to listen to them. Trust me, this one level one. Huh? This one you can try with your family member immediately tonight. Yeah, right after this uh, talk. So like uh, whoever, like Lina, you are listening with your husband, right? Uh, try to listen to your husband or husband can listen to Lina uh, tonight and you will see how, how beneficial level one is. Okay, powerful. Level two. Listen with your eyes. So some of you correctly, uh, correctly uh, mentioning just now about body language, right? So listening with your eyes means that as you are listening to the person's words, you are paying attention using your eyes to what the person is doing, right? Uh, is their eyes looking at you is there, or is their eyes fidgeting around the environment, right? What is doing with their hands? Like you say, hands, when you fold it this way, is a defensive stance, right? Or if they put their hands in the pockets, or if their hands are fiddling with the phone, all these are, are gestures which you can obviously observe. And then from there, it will help you to form some kind of understanding what this person is going through. And if you are able to accurately determine what body language this person is trying to portray, you bring your listening to another level. All right? Take for instance, um, you know, there was a time in my, in my career where I was working with people with mental health issues. All right? And, and, and there was this topic that we were talking about, um, self-love. And whenever I talk about the topic of self-love, one, of one of the participants start to uh, hug, hug herself. Right? So, a bit of an uh, insecure feeling. So initially, when I didn't know, I thought it was because the aircon is very cold. Then after that, I realized that actually by doing this, this is actually a self-soothing um, behavior. And what does it mean? It means that the topic that we are discussing at that point in time may be something that is a little bit uncomfortable for her. Right? So taking this body language into consideration, yeah, we will be able to then ask more relevant questions. Hey, um, is everything okay? Is the, are you, is, do you find that the topic is too difficult you know, for you to, to speak about? Or, or would, you, would you like some time uh, to try to uh, process what we have just said? You know, things like that. So then when you do that, that person will realize that, hey, wow, even my uh, subtle unspoken language, you are able to understand and you're able to uh, make adjustments for me. So again, it shows that you care and you care so much more now. Okay, and now the level three. Uh, so if you can do level one, level two, you are one of the best listeners in the world already. Okay, 
Level three, listen with your heart. Okay, and if you want to talk about listen with your heart, I can summarize it into one word. All right, listening with your heart can be summarized into the word empathy. Okay, empathy and sympathy is not the same. Huh? Sympathy is a feeling. Yeah, I, sympathy is like a feeling that you have for somebody which you feel you know has didn't achieve. Uh, it didn't achieve the goal. Didn't uh, you know get as much they as they should in life. But empathy is putting yourself into the other person's shoe, living a day in that person's life. All right, and why I choose this picture is because I feel that specifically, uh, conversations between seniors, especially uh, senior ladies. Okay, they have the most empathy when they are having a conversation. Why? When they start to talk about things like, you know, their, their children, or they talk about, uh, you know, certain things that happen within their family, usually the response that you will hear from, from the reply will be like, Wow, like that, very gang call eh. Can you see? Gang call means that it's very, it's very difficult, it's very tough, which means that, uh, the, the, the recipient, the other lady, managed to hear the emotions inside the whole sentence. You must be feeling really difficult right now. Right? I'm able to extract the emotion from all the words, all the body language that you've said. Which means that I put myself in your position and try to feel what you are feeling. Right? And therefore, level 3 requires you to be able to take all the visual cues, the words that they choose, and then you try to form a picture, and then Reflect back, yes, you must, have, you must be feeling this way. Very jiala. You know, all the words that people use that used to describe emotion, when you are able to accurately use this word and pinpoint uh, at various points of the conversation, right? Then you notice that, eh, hey, wow, you really understand me, right? You really know what I'm feeling, you really know what I'm going through. Now, when this kind of thing happens, do you feel you are able to connect with the person more? Right? And does it help you to increase your likability? Correct? So you see, what I'm saying about putting other people first is not to ask you to do uh, you know, very, uh, very loud, very aggressive things. No, no, no. I'm just asking you to slow down look at the person in front of you, pay more attention to what the person is doing, what the person is wearing, what the person is saying, what the person is feeling. Alright? Now, next part. Uh, these are also very simple things that you can do to help you to increase your likability even more. Okay? Are you all ready? Okay, let's go. Now, C refers to consistency in action. Why I need to put this section down is because a lot of people, uh, when they listen to talks, be it conducted by me or conducted by other people on similar topics like this, they will go and do the behavior immediately, maybe later on, maybe tomorrow, and then they see the result. But then after two or three days, they stop doing it anymore. Uh, stop doing it altogether. And because and after that happens, then they ask, they ask a question, oh, yeah, these uh, behaviors don't work, one. they don't work, right? Or then after that, they take a long break and then they resume and start doing again. They resume and start doing again. And then they realize that, you know, they're actually not getting more like more likable. In fact, they're getting more, more annoying. So people actually dislike them. And what is the reason? Right? If today I care, 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 I care so much about you, then tomorrow I don't care, I don't care, I don't care. Then suddenly one week later, I care again. Then you look at me, you were thinking, hey, Jackie, you very fake. Eh? Right? Is it you want something from me? That's why you care about me. Right? So this is, uh, this is why consistence, consistency is key. It helps us to, 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 to make sure that you know, what we are doing is from the bottom of our heart. It's genuine, it's real, it's sincere. So first things. Consistency. Consistently smile. Okay, smile more. Smile every day. All right. If you know this uh, famous children's song, a uh, smile is quite a funny thing. It wrinkles up your face. Right. So we know that it takes less muscle to activate a smile 
then it takes to activate a frown. Right? Which means that when you frown, uh, actually your, your, you risk getting more wrinkles because your face is more creased up. When you smile, you know, less, less creases occur, so therefore less wrinkles occur. Right? So smile more, smile every day. Look at Marilyn uh, Monroe's smile in this uh, photo down here. Doesn't she look very approachable? Doesn't she look very likable? Just because she enjoys her life, she enjoys what she's doing. Alright? Exactly. Think about all the likable people around you. Okay? Um, if you cannot think of one, I'll just tell you. On the Saturday show, 9am, Aong. He smiles so much. When he smiles, he only radiates one thing. And that one thing he radiates is positive energy. So when you have positive energy, more people want to talk with you. More people want to approach you. More people want to take photo with you. And that's exactly the stuff that we see happen to Ethan all the time whenever he's at a rally session. Everybody go up to take photo with him like he's a celebrity. Right? And that's the reason because he smiles. He smiles so much. Right? So if today you find that you know smiling is not something that you do um, consistently, go and practice. Alright, practice and smile. Don't believe tomorrow you go and buy uh, stuff from the market or supermarket, smile at the cashier. Trust me. Trust me. The, the impact that you create. Alright, I know you're wearing a mask, your smile you cannot see, but I tell you, your eyes, uh, the smile can be seen through your eyes as well. Oh, okay, so what is level two? After you smile, I would like you to greet. Alright? So something that I do every day, if you don't believe, you can ask my team members, all right? You can observe me whenever I go to the, the, the coffee shop or I go and buy a drive through at the McDonald's or whatever. I always will talk to the person. I will always ask them additional question, all right? So for example, when I was working in Topayo and my lunch venue was at Topayo Lorong 8, Okay, now I sell a bit of, uh, I do a bit of advertisement for them. Uh. So it's the last row, beef noodles. Last row, uh, not first row. First row is another shop, but last row. So this nice lady, I always go and uh, patronize her store when I was working in that area. And then uh, to the point, she because she start off first, right? Life cycle, what you want to eat. So she asked, she say, hey, handsome boy, what you want to eat? So... <laughs> I thought it was serious, right? So I say, okay, Mei so this is what I want to eat. So I say, yeah, pretty girl, this is what I want to eat. And in that sense, we started to have a conversation. And guess what? For the price of $4, which is the price of the standard bowl of beef noodles, because I greet her, I talk with her, guess what? I pay $4, but I believe that I'm getting $5 worth of food. And how do I know that? Because every time she gives me the noodle, and then she gives other people the soup bowl, she gives the small bowl. But when she gives to me, she gives me the big bowl. And she even tell me, after you drink finish, come and collect some more. See, does it really hurt you to go and say good morning to a person? No. Right? Does it really hurt you to go and say how is your day? Ah, right? And then the last bit is to really... and and. Like what I say, compliment on the dress, compliment on the hair, whichever it may be, just to build a relationship with the person. At the end, what happened? The end result is there are two people who is happy. She is happy because I made her life interesting and I am happy because I got more value for my money, right? And I mean, more importantly, we all made a friend, correct? So go and greet every single person you see uh, tomorrow. Right? When you all work with me at those uh, events or, or like recently at the mask distribution or the, or the hand sanitizer distribution, you see, I say good morning to every single person. Don't really care who are they, whether they are coming here to collect or not. I just say good morning. They smile, I smile, everybody is happy. Right? Nothing going to go wrong. So yes, starting from now or tomorrow, go and greet every single person. Say one more extra word. Hey, good morning, how are you? Then go ahead and nice hair, nice motorcycle, nice car that you have. It's going to work great. Okay? Now, level three. This part, uh, I will need to use this hamburger to try to 
to, to um, articulate my point. Okay? I want you to impress people. I want you to impress everybody every time. And then how do you, you like, eh, Jackie, very difficult. Then how do you impress people for consistently over every single occasion? All right. We impress people by doing this. Huh? So number one, when we talk about marketing, we always have an uh, expectation. So if you look at the advertisement side, this is what we expect the burger to look like. Okay, very uh, full, there's a lot of, uh, the, the vegetable is arranged nicely and then the meat is beautifully stacked at the bottom layer of the burger. Okay, then reality. Night, last time, uh, I think now not so bad, but last time, because my favorite, my favorite food is McDonald's double cheeseburger, uh, so just that you all know. Okay, in the, in the photo, it shows that the double cheeseburger is quite high. At the same time, the on top bun is uh, very smooth, very round. But then, uh, sometimes in the past, when they do delivery especially, they stack all the french fries and the drinks and all these things on top. And then when the burger comes, right, it actually looks like that. Actually look like that. <laughs> right? The, everything is all mushed up and very flat and squashed. All right. So why am I talking about this? It's because when you do things, uh, like for example, in a job, in a job interview kind of a situation, inside your resume, uh, it's very easy for you to, to fall into the trap where you write all the nice things about yourself and then you write with all the gigantic words. Uh, so instead of uh, saying that uh, you participated in the in the event, you say, wow, I manage uh, and then I lead uh, and all this kind of thing. But then when the interviewer actually asks you, so what did you do in that event? And then all you can give are examples of yourself doing the, the doing, uh, what you call that? You didn't do any management work, right? So then the interviewer will find that you are somebody who is not being truthful, not being sincere. And definitely, do you think they are impressed? No. <laughs> totally not impressed, right? So, when we talk about being able to impress people, expectation must not, sorry, we, our reality must always be better than our expectation. So, if you know that you are, let's say today you are a plumber, okay? People expect to call you and you fix the leak. So, if you fix the leak, Great job. You are a good plumber. People will recommend you to the next uh, person. But how to be a best plumber? So you tell the person, I need one hour to fix this leaking pipe. But in actual fact, you did it within 45 minutes. So you under-promise, but you over-deliver. Are you impressive? Very impressive. Best plumber award, 100% goes to you. So same thing, if today, guys, you want to uh, you know, be likable, you need to be impressive. And how to be impressive is not for you to go and do great things, uh, earn big dollars and cents and all this. It's not that. It's that when you promise people something, make sure that you actually can deliver. Yeah, if you promise people, that's why usually when, when you think about it, all the people that you don't like are those people who promise you the sky and the moon and all they give you back is just the sand, right? And, and then you, you find like, wow, how come, how come like that? If you, if you can't do it, you just say, if you say earlier, at least we could have done something about it, right? So here, I say one more time, okay? The reality must always exceed the expectation. Again, in other words will be, under promise and over deliver. That way, you will be able to be very impressive all the time and people will like you even more. Okay, so yeah, I see that, uh, you know, some of you, some of you are writing, are waiting to write me some questions. Okay, so I think the, the, the gist of what I want to share with you guys today will be will be uh, what, what I said, right? So let's do a quick recap. The first one is about noticing other people. Okay, level one, notice something that's very obvious. Level two is something that's not so obvious. And level three is not obvious at all. All right, and it requires you to go and observe the person 
understand the person and uh, know the person at a deeper level in order for you to get there. Then the next thing will be to listen. All right, so listen with your ears, listen with your eyes, listen with your heart. At the end of the day, when we say that, what we just want you to do is for you to pay attention to the person, listen to them at the emotional level so that they feel heard. Okay, and then lastly, will be for you to be consistent. So there are certain behavior that you need to consistently do and you will see the result happening, right? Smiling, uh, what do you call that? Uh, smiling, greeting, and then uh, being impressive with your result where you always under promise and you always over deliver. Okay, now we still have uh, about 10 more minutes. If there's any question right now, I would like to take them. So what kind of questions I think will be helpful right now is if you all have questions related to uh, what we call that, to your workplace, or some real interpersonal relationship where people um, you're having hard time for people to like you, right? So maybe you can just share and then we can see how 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 we can use what we've learned today to try to 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 rectify that. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Advertisements are deceitful, correct? And that's why they are called advertisements. And then we all don't like advertisements and we skip all of them the moment uh, we see the skip button appear. Right? Cool. Alright. Any questions that I can help you all to address? Last week we had a lot on uh, angry people. But this week, Doing extra is helpful with care. Yes, in what you are right. How do we choose topic to engage in small talk with people? Mm, thank you, Andy, for the question. Huh? How do we choose the topic to engage in small talk? All right, small talk, right, is, is something that, that I don't know, man. As a as an individual, when I when I describe myself, right, you know my name is Jackie. So I always tell people that exactly like my name, I'm a jack of all trade but master of none. Which means that I know a lot. No, I know a little about a lot of things. I know a little about a lot of things. So like you know, you watch the newspaper, you watch the news, you read the newspaper, you read some tabloids, everything you know a little bit. That's where you'll be able to do a small talk. But then uh, I have a number one small talk that I always use when I got run out of topics. Okay, so if you run out of topics and you desperately need something to talk about, right? Okay, guys, this one uh, is a Jackie secret. So next time you hear me talk about this, uh, you know this one is I got no more things to say already. Talk about the weather. <laughs> okay, is the weather good today? All right, so when you talk about the weather, definitely can lead to other things because why if the weather is good we can definitely bring our family go out if the weather is bad then what do you do when you stay at home so when you talk about the weather it is a great opener for you to have another kind of uh, small talk all right yes uh leslie and sy helps in our daily life will pass to my son who will be starting work soon definitely okay please help me to share out these these uh, talks whenever i'm conducting them because um I, I find that when I'm sharing this, I'm also trying to incorporate a bit of my own experiences to help you and especially the youths need to learn this because in the future, there are many jobs that can be replaced by machines and robots but relationship, human to human relationship, this is something that everybody needs to know. Computer cannot replace relationship if you, if you know what I mean. Okay? Now, next thing is... Uh, what if people don't like you because they are jealous of you, not because you are likable, because you are not likable, because they are jealous of you? Let me think about this. Huh? Okay, for me, that, um, how to say, uh, I always have this mindset where I cannot win everything. Yeah, if today I can make anybody like me, like let's say today the world has uh, one how many trillion people, right? And then uh, every single human being like me, I think that's very hard. Lah. Like today, I'm, I'm very lucky I'll be able to connect with all of you, you know, uh, within this uh, Team Nina volunteer family. However, if today I were to bring my topic to go to uh, uh, 
a, a crowd that really hates hates talking about you know self help, right? Then it's, it is natural that they will not like me, la. So so, but in in talking with them, I continue to remain uh, smiling. I continue to greet them and I definitely continue to be consistent with my actions because I think these are three things that I always do in order to help to change other people's mind. Okay, because you know, if you all met me in real life, you all know that I am very big size and if I don't smile, I look like I am angry. So, for the volunteers that met me for the first time last year during Get Active Singapore, it's a lot of them feel that I'm unapproachable and they all go and talk with Ellen instead. Right? So then I have to smile. Right? I have to greet them. Hey, how are you? I mean, I think in quite you definitely experienced that with me before, right? At the start when you first met me for the first time. Yeah, I'm as tall as you and then, uh, you know, you definitely find that well, this Jackie look like some uh, Haolian person. <laughs> but then, uh, you know, as we talk, as we as I continue to smile and greet, and then uh, that's, that's how uh, things open up. So, yes, jealousy can be a very powerful uh, emotion for us to overcome. But I think at the end, we just need to continue to remain sincere, remain genuine, smile, greet them, all good, no problem. They will definitely change. Right? First impression, this one can turn. Yeah, Lily, you are right. Be kind, be helpful, things like that. Ah, PL, people who are outstanding and capable usually attract jealousy and are disliked. See, uh, guys, when you are outstanding and you are capable, right, I always believe that it is a meaning for you to, that means you are capable of helping other people. Being able to do your own work properly uh, is not enough. Okay, once you are able to figure out the work and you are able to, to do the work nicely and beautifully, right? It means one thing. It means that it's time for you to go and help other people to do the work. Yeah. So that's when you take your success and you share the success with everybody. Then there is no jealousy. Why? Jealousy is because you are keeping some secret. So last time, my teacher always tell me that um, in ancient China, when I learned martial art, so, uh, you know, the, the 18 dragon thumb, Xiang Long Si Ba Zhang. So, the teacher always very scared the student will kill him. So, out of the 18 thumb, they only teach him 17. The last one they keep for themselves. So, do you think the student will be jealous or not? Right? So, that's why in the story, always the student will try to kill the teacher. But then the teacher always will win because why he keep one he keep one uh, palm for himself and then that's the ultimate move to uh, kill the student. So I think that's why um, in our current society, we always like that. When we are well, we always try to keep, 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 keep. But let me tell you today, when you are well, take what you have extra or you are comfortable and go and share. Then there is no jealousy. Trust me. Yeah. Okay. What's the next question? Must apply your tip of praising the hawker. <laughs> it's not praise, not not this one is not good linking. Uh, I just need to clarify. Uh, it's about making friends and uh, building a relationship with your community. Uh. Okay, branding is important. Branding goes with your character and attitude. Be positive, be genuine, be approachable. Wear comfortably and match with the environment. Be yourself and smile always. That's a great summary. Okay, um, let's talk about this guy called Steve Jobs. Okay, and then after that, he's new. He's uh, he's he's uh, the guy that took over him, Tim Cook. None of them are very flashy. They just wear they just wear clothes that are presentable. They look like they are the boss. But then uh, you know, you can't tell whether is it a branded stuff or not. It's not about showing off here. Uh, it's just trying to show you that you're just trying to wear something that is presentable in front of the camera. What happens when we have really be our best and nice talking to people and advise people and offer our help to people and yeah, people challenge us with their bad attitude? What happened? The guy was, the lady is not wearing her mask, coughing badly, advise her to use the tissue to cover her mouth. Want to give her a new mask. Wow, wow, wow. And scold you vulgar words. Got uneasy, get down the bus, don't want to argue. I think Anthony, this is about conflict management. All right. Sometimes we have the best of intentions and people don't understand us and they refuse to understand us. So in my talk last week, I did mention when we are in a conflict situation, reasonableness go down. 
So asking them to do something and uh, trying to reason out with them is going to be very difficult. So in this case, just listen and if you if you, this is a battle you don't want to engage in, then just don't engage. Really, don't engage. Not everything must fight. Uh, that's what I will say. Yeah, so I think it's the right thing to do when you uh, leave the bus and don't argue with her because uh, if really she has like, some reason why she doesn't want to wear the mask, she will not tell you anyway, right? And by you telling her that she should wear a mask, she already feel ashamed. That's why the anger is used to come and cover the shame. Yeah, being disliked is not the problem. Worse is that just people go to extend to bad mouth you, influence and ostracize. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, yeah, PL, you are absolutely right. Lah. Right, so this is to do with office politics. Um, yeah, it's a good topic. Perhaps we can uh, we can address that in another session. Is that something y'all will be interested in to talk about office politics? <laughs> yeah, always happen on uh, especially if you watch the the those uh, TV drama like Yan Si Palace uh, that time inside the ancient palace are uh, always got a lot of politics between all the niang niang. So yes, this kind of thing will always happen. Okay, cool. So I hope that uh, you know you guys have a great uh, learning session with us today. Again, you know we just do this uh, one hour talk sort of to share a bit of knowledge and uh, you know help to get in touch with our community um, during this uh, period where this is the new norm, right? Last time uh, we can always organize a session inside the classroom. Everybody come to classroom and learn something. But right now I think using Zoom. It's quite comfortable. Y'all eat dinner, just turn on, watch me as if I am a TV show. <laughs> right? So, yes. If there's a topic that y'all are interested in and y'all want to hear more about it, and if I can, I'll definitely do it for you. Alright? Uh, the kind of topics that I'm interested in is, uh, what you call that? It's called the popular psychology. Pop psych. Uh. So, it, I can definitely talk a little bit about mental health if y'all are interested in that or if there's some a uh, common day-to-day -day scenario which you all are interested in and would like to know more, just uh, feel free to check in with me. If not, you know, I really hope you guys learn something. Do share with me your learning. Alright? At the end of the day, if you feel that you want to practice but don't know where you can practice this uh, in a clean slate because you find that, wow, you know, like in the office, I find that I'm not so comfortable to try out all these techniques. Let me tell you the solution. Join Team Nila. Why? Because the public that you talk to, probably you're never, never going to see them again, right? So it's the best time for you to learn how to smile, how to greet, and see the impact of it happening right in front of your eyes. Then take the learning, the experience, go back to your workplace, and then you implement there inside your workplace, right? So especially all those uh, volunteers that have went to Philippines, a lot of things happen there inside the children's home, inside the, the badminton stadium. A lot of stuff we try for the first time and we saw the ma magic, the impact. Then we come back to Singapore, we implement in our own ways. Like I see some of our volunteers went and go and bring food, uh, go and give to go and give to the, the needy community. And then the, the immediate uh, reaction from them when they receive this, uh, you know, the care pack is, is amazing. Uh. So yeah, I think we just need to try and Team Mila provide you with that platform to try it out. Okay, cool. You guys are amazing. Huh? Let me see. Ken, so with that, uh, I would like to end uh, today's session. Any questions, just feel free to share it inside the comments. I'll still be around for the next 5 to 10 minutes. If not, uh, you know, thank you everybody. Jackie signing off. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you everybody.